Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video with myself, Amata, and I hope you're having an amazing day. For those new to the channel, Paul is unwell today, so it is down to yours truly, who runs the channel alongside Paul, to give you the skinny on what's going on in the tech world today. And the first thing is a very, very interesting benchmark for a Zen 4 part. But before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor, whokeys.com, who are offering some pretty nice deals on Windows 10 Pro Keys and more. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also of course sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, this benchmark was discovered in the Basemark database by Tom Apisak, who should need no introduction at this point. Now, we can't see exactly which SKU this is, but we can make a pretty damn educated guess. Now, obviously, the, the Eng sample code is, well, it was about as helpful as a chocolate fire guard, but we can, of course, see that it's a six-core part and is running on an X670 uh, gigabyte Aorus masterboard, which basically means that the likelihood of this being a Zen 4 CPU is very, very high indeed because this board is a AM5 socket, and the fact that it's a six-core SKU means that it is most likely going going to be the 7600X. But what else can we glean from this benchmark? Well, the first thing I want to touch on is that clock speed of 4.4 GHz. Now, I will stress, as always with engineering sample benchmarks, this is an early sample. This is not the final result that is going to be on the shelves when they finally release. So things will change and get better before this product actually sees the light of, well, a consumer purchasing it. Now, before I go any further, there's a few things that we also keep in mind here. The first of which is that the clock frequency may not be reported correctly because, again, this is not a part that is actually released yet. And the benchmark this was tested on is not exactly well known. Let's just put it that way. But even with that in mind, this still what looks pretty impressive. We do have a benchmark that has been provided by Harukazi5719 as a bit of a comparison as to how this does versus Zen 3, or the 5950X to be more specific. And as you can see, it is doing better than the 5950X. But again, there is this one, there is just this one benchmark, excuse me. And again, this is not particularly popular benchmark. You know, if it was Cinebench or something along those lines, it would be better, but still, this is looking pretty damn promising, and as I've already said, this is an engineering sample, and we will see this improve before the final release. Some of you are undoubtedly remembering that the 5600X has a 4.6 GHz clock speed, so obviously we should wait and see what happens with the final silicon. Obviously, we already know that with Zen 4, we are not looking at huge IPC gains, but still, overall, this is looking pretty damn promising. And for those of you wondering if we've heard any news about the release date changing or anything like that, no, according to our sources, we are still hearing sort of August, September time of release day, but obviously Pinch of Salt TM is definitely required until we hear word from AMD. But we're going to move from AMD to their Arch Nemesis NVIDIA as we have a bit of an update for RTX 40. Now, we've been talking about it a lot lately, and <laughs> to say that things keep changing and are up in the air regarding this is kind of a bit of an understatement. But we have some very interesting leaks here on the potential release date for some of these SKUs for RTX 40. And at least according to Grayman, we're going to be seeing the AD102 SKU, so that is literally just the RTX 4090, at least according to what Grayman is saying, in 2022, an AD103, which would be the 4080 and 104 and 106, are going to be 2023. But again, it's really tough to say with this one because we keep hearing different things almost daily as to what's going on with RTX 40, and I wouldn't even be surprised if NVIDIA themselves don't really know what's going on with it yet. As we discussed in our video quite recently, at the moment it's just kind of, will it be delayed? Maybe. That is 
the only real answer we have for you at the moment, but this just adds, you know, more confusion to the pot, I suppose. But to brighten your day a little bit for some N NVIDIA positive news, NVIDIA did announce the other day that they are set to announce an official price cut f to the RTX 30 series, according to Benchlife. And this is, of course, due to the fact that there's a lot of stock flooding the market due to the crypto crash and all sorts of other uh, factors that could go into this. So if you've been holding off on purchasing an RTX 30 card until RTX 40 comes out due to the inevitable price cuts, yes, they may indeed get a future price cut, but they are still getting a pretty significant cut to their pricing. According to what Benchlife have provided, we're going to be seeing the 3080 Ti, for example, go down from $1,200 to well, $1,100, just under. Which, you know, is not exactly cheap, but it is still $100 less than it was. And a new price has been set for the 3080 12GB, which never had an official MSRP of $800. And again, this is the MSRP, so there's nothing stopping your local retailer from reducing the price even further, but this is just setting a new MSRP as the baseline, I guess you could say. So, yeah, this, this might be your time, guys. This might be your time. And we're going to finish up with, well, the complete triad, shall we say, as we skip on over to Intel, as we have yet another benchmark for the 13900K Raptor Lake processor. Now, this is basically a quote-unquote review of a qualification sample, which is basically nearly identical to the actual retail sample in terms of performance, and this is as close as we're going to get to a pre-launch review of Raptor Lake, for those of you who are perhaps thinking of going over to Camp Intel or upgrading your Intel rigs. So this was a review shared by Extreme Player, and you can, of course, find their link below and they did share some CPU-Z data and we can see and we can see a 3.0 gigahertz uh, base clock and a boost of 5.5 to 5.7 gigahertz range depending on the boost technology and they also provided some benchmarks here so let's do the red tape first as always of course and by the red tape I mean the specifications of the test rig and we see an ASUS ROG 7690 Extreme motherboard with DDR5 memory at 6400 MTS and we see a 3060 Ti graphics card, 1500 watt power supply and a Thermalright AIO Frozen Magic 360 cooling solution. So overall the reviewer is claiming that the 13900K is on average 10% faster in single core than the 12900KF and up to 35% faster in multi-thread. Now obviously as with all benchmarks it does depend on the test as for the results but we do see an overall rough appearance of Raptor Lake going up to 46.34% in multi-core than Older Lake, but also 22% in Geekbench 5. Now they did put all their results in one lovely handy chart. There is a lot of information here, so I'll try to keep it on screen for uh, a good length of time just so you can try and pass it. But as you can see, Raptor Lake is indeed faster, but as I'm sure you're all about to say, this is mainly coming from the higher clock speeds, and this is kind of hammered home by the fact that, well, in a frequency test where they were tested at the same frequency, they did almost identical in a CPU-Z test. But still, regardless of the reasoning behind it, we do, also, we do still see, excuse me, a significant improvement versus Older Lake, and again, this is just one set of benchmarks, although I will say they do have a pretty damn nice spread of benchmarks here, you know, Geekbench, Cineband, CPU-Z, 7-Zip, and so on. So props to them for very thorough testing there. Obviously, the real test for a lot of you guys is going to be those critical gaming benchmarks, but we'll probably have to wait a while before we see any of those. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Hopefully, Paul will be back tomorrow in fighting form. We'll have to see. Um, but either way, thank you guys for watching. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.